Stand up memories. You are so (laughs) shallow. (laughs) I'm shallow. I need to start with this. uh, I know we have a guest. We will get to her in a minute. You are so shallow. And you know why I say that? Why? Because I am so shallow. (laughs) So by extension, you are so shallow. I've been a moody, not especially moody, but just not a really happy camper. And I had a show Friday night. And I killed, and I'm a different person. Okay. And that is so shallow. No, it's not. I mean, noticeably no, different. It's not shallow. You're a comedian. You but had a it, good it, show. I was, it didn't work to Paramount. I didn't do a movie. I did a show at a little Italian restaurant in Staten Island, on Staten Island. And, but it was, it was killer, and like, I'm a new guy. All right. How can you be that shallow? I don't know, Jackie, but you, you know, you, you might be a new guy to you but you're sounding a little bit like the old guy right oh. now. <laughs> Not to keep this about no. me, but Jackie. I am especially happy today because I had a knee replacement exactly a year ago, and I've exercised every day since. And it's been one year, and today was my last time with the knee bends and the crap, and I am done, and it's behind me. So that's another reason that I am this happy. Well, to regular- Are you ever gonna introduce the guest? To regular viewers of Stand Up Memories, this is the happiest. Both Jackie. of you. <laughs> this is the happiest Jackie's ever been. I'm Peter Bales. This is the happiest Jackie the Joke Man. We'd Martin. like to apologize. Uh, Peter did not get the memo to wear the matching shirt, so he's a little. I am. I have stripes. They have checks, and we have Larry Izzo, a comedian. Now Jackie told me about Larry. With the I honest- met Larry on the Anthony Cumia show, and we're the same age. We had so many of the same. Ma- we were like instant friends, right? right? We just instant became- friends. So, but the way Jackie explained it was, he's a comedian and an exterminator. Ex exterminator. He's in for ex, the for ex, the mob, ex, for, but for the mob. No, but that you can't. No, lead but with I that. actually said you led with that to me, and I said, you want me to book a hitman on our show. <laughs> I said that. That's what you made it sound yeah, like. Yeah, but he he's, said he he's was a hitman, ex- but what he kills is not people, he kills bugs. It was, it was interesting, he was the top exterminator in Manhattan. He wasn't a comedian and an exterminator. He did his exterminations and, and became very, very successful, number one in the tri-state area, and then he How do you d- measure retired that? and decided, you know. How do you get Who else one? would claim that? And then he Were decided you the top to go exterminator in New York City. I was one of them. Well, that's that's <laughs> terrific. And you, I give him top. Well, I think you kill audiences now, right? Now well, you're yeah. That's the comedian. only trade, the two trades that you can kill and bomb in the, in the same. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> but he was telling me, well, you know, and it's interesting the whole thing. And then he started telling his stories about, but let him tell. Yes. Okay. He, Larry's a comedian. And him and his girlfriend have become very dear friends of me and my girlfriend, Barbara Well, Klein. that's nice. That's, this is all nice. No, but that's, you know, that's, it's warm. It's well, nice. I'm going to say Larry Izzo, comedian and exterminator, ex-exterminator, uh, now a comedian. Who also does. A podcast. A you, cooking you, podcast. A cooking, tell us, start, tell us about your cooking podcast. Well, the, the podcast is called The Thrill of the Kill. And uh, the well, cooking But it show. wasn't originally. When no, no. I first I, met you, two, it two was... Two different shows. Oh, two different shows. So we have the Thrill of the Kill podcast. It's an audio podcast. I interview exterminators and anybody that's killing anything in any trade. And, uh, <laughs> not, 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 not. No, not, 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 I get that. Right, not, not literally. <laughs> but, uh, not and them. the cooking show <laughs> is uh, cooking with comics. So we cook with comedians. And we shot a couple of shows at Chokeland yes. at my house. Yes. And I think, I think we told the story on... On this show, where we had a great show and we're having a wonderful time, and I made beef stroganoff and we're sitting around eating it, and it was wonderful. And I realized that I hadn't put the sour cream, sour cream. in it, which meant we were eating beef stew. <laughs> <laughs> and we all let we, we you know, maybe we were a little. Stoned I think that's a great it. idea. You cook with comics. Yeah. Boy, well, are, are comics educated in the art of cuisine? Most I, of them are not. Yes. So, <laughs> well, so I mean, Jackie you, was, but most of them don't. So I make up a recipe or give them a recipe to make, and then we. Minervini showed up with a TV dinner. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm bad with that. I show up at 7-Eleven, and the guy behind the counter goes, the usual? <laughs> John you know? Peasy's uh, puppets cooked better than he did. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really fun. You know, sta- there's nothing more fun than, you know, what, even at home when you're making dinner for friends and you're standing around in the kitchen. It's always great. It's always great. Well, I think that's terrific. What a great idea. I just don't think I'm suited for... I'm not good at cooking. I can. I eat. think he should be. I think I, you should be on the show. I think he should I be do. your next. Well, guest. I I will cook, but I honestly. Um, you have to have a meal that you especially like. I do. What and is it? Mush. mush. And I'm serious. What are you, the little rascal? I'm not even kidding. <laughs> it, okay, Jackie gets it. <laughs> mush, and the reason is because my father was born in Louisville, Kentucky and came to New York at age 12. He brought that recipe with his family and cornmeal Hold mush. Hold on. There's a recipe for mush? There is a recipe, and it's been passed down from my father's family to my brother and I, who he has passed it down to his daughter. We had cornmeal mush on Christmas I Day. Th- I have no idea what that is. It, I thought it was uh, cereal. I yeah, it was it's just like of, bad oatmeal. It's, yeah. it's, it's basically made out of mu- uh, cornmeal and salt and water. And Now, do you, you understand what's going on right now? I'm trying We're to, doing his podcast. This is what this is what you, well, you what can I'm do so, on I his can podcast. Do it on, I'll say it on his podcast. You if can you explain it to everybody. You made a reference to the little rascals. They hated mush because they had to have it every day. But if you have something on Christmas Day every year with bacon, okay, and in the north they put syrup on, on mush, in the south they don't. It's just if butter. Mush is an incredibly poverty, it's a not, poverty it, people's food. Bacon is like $10,000, <laughs> you know. It's like having a Well, you ask me, what do we have Christmas morning in my family, you do not mush with bacon, and to this uh, day, to this day, because my my niece now makes it, and uh, it's a special recipe from Kentucky. Imagine having a family where the <laughs> recipe that's passed down from generation to generation is mush. Mush, and you I'm know not- what you wind up with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of that. I love it. I want. I'm going to be on the show with him. I will be oh. your sous chef. You could be the sous chef. So yeah. I'll hand you the. What, I the can corn get that recipe. And the spoon. I'll get the recipe and the timing and everything, and and you will find it delicious <laughs> and special. If you have to have it every day, uh, mush is mush. But this is mush. Yeah, I don't think I want to have it one day in a row. <laughs> so Larry's talking about how he has a new client. Tell, tell them the story about having a new client and you and your father going out to breakfast. Oh, uh, well, my new client. This happened, is years ago. This is years ago. We're going back to the 70s, you know, early 70s. I had a client and I did not know he was a made gangster. Okay. So Now, I, you, you did cockroaches, rats. Everything. You name anything. it, we killed it. Yes. So we did the whole nine yards. We serviced a lot of restaurants, and this gentleman and his brother-in-law and his sister-in-law had to, uh, brother-in-law and sister, uh, had this restaurant called Joe and Mary's uh, Italian Restaurant on Knickerbocker Avenue. I didn't know it was Carmine Galanti, the, ah. the uh, pizza connection guy, right? <laughs> so we were walking around, and he got to like me. He started giving me business to his, you know, I started doing gambling puzzles. But this, you so. talked restaurant and extermination. You didn't talk about his other affiliations. No, no, I didn't even know who he was. Well, maybe the, he at, was at, attracted at, to your slogan, you name it, we kill it. No, <laughs> you, you slab him, we slab him. That's what I was <laughs> No, I think it was, he asked me, he said, so uh, what are you good at? And I said, I'm good at killing rats, you know? And he fell off the chair. So he says to me, bring your father in. The the crossover. I mean, the the, cross-pollination is so great. It's a TV show. It was was so Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. So no, no, it was fun. So anyway, he says, bring your family in. So I said, I don't know. You know, I'll bring my father in. So one late Saturday afternoon. This is a a big Italian restaurant? It wasn't that big. It was a regular little New York Italian restaurant. This is a place they all hung out, you know. And then the backyard was there speaking place that was where they talked right like bocce court and everything right right tomato gardens the whole nine yards it wasn't that big it was 50 by 100 you know whatever 
So anyway, so uh, they pull I pull the chair my... up close to talk to each other. <laughs> Who's that guy? I don't know. <laughs> He's nobody. <laughs> so anyway, so I bring my dad in, and my dad turns like gray. And I'm going, what's wrong with you? So he says, do you know who this guy is? Had he already come over to you? Huh? Oh, yeah. He went over to my father and shook his hand, and Joe and Mary were there. You know, there was nobody in the restaurant, basically, because it was early afternoon, you know, like 4 o'clock. Hey, buddy. Yeah, right. So we're sitting there, and he goes, no, your son's a good kid. He's like, you know. So he goes, hey, Pop. So he goes, do you know who that is? So I said, no. I said, Come on, Joe, Mary, you know. He says, do you read the papers? I said, no. I listen to 1010 Wins. I get the world in 22 minutes. There you go. <laughs> like so he, he freaks out, and he says, that's Carmine Galante. He's like, what's wrong with you? So I didn't say nothing. We went home and everything. Next time I serviced the place, I see him. And Did I Carmine him. pick up the check and everything? Oh, there was no check. There was no check. It was like a... Uh, whatever you want. Whatever you want. You know. But I didn't know that until the end. And he goes, yeah. no, it's on me. And no I'm rats like, running around. No rats at all. You don't know. <laughs> so... I go back the next time, and I said, hey, Mr. Carmine, I says, uh, my father told me who you are. So he goes, so you want to run numbers for me? I said, no, I'm only good at killing rats. <laughs> did he, he, real, did he really <laughs> say that? Honest to God. That. Honest to God. <laughs> I mean, that's a wonderful addition to the story, no, but, but if he really, he really said, said that. that. He really said that, because he knew that I knew. And then oh, he's giving me all these things. Now I'm putting two, to, two together. I got gambling polls, you know. And for an exterminator, I guess to run numbers, what do you do? You pick up a package, you drop off the package. You know what? I'm a thousand years old and I've been in New York and exposed to all this. To, I do not know what that means to run numbers. Run numbers. Do people bet on numbers and... People bet on numbers and bookies. Not, is that a horse race or is it... No, it's numbers that are... Well, it has something to do with... I don't know how the numbers are figured out, to be very honest with you. I never knew that. People put down bets... And then if they and then they pick a number, three three numbers, you know, like three. Could you go around and uh, somebody who runs numbers picks up the money and pays and they off? Bet the a, they bet against. They bet on it, and then the bookie takes it and goes back, and whoever wins wins, and whoever which loses. is a, a less successful business now that we have the New York lottery exactly. and, and all of that right. Re right. replaced. The old-fashioned but years ago numbers. it was in your yeah. factories you had bookies in the factories. every barbershop every barbershop barbershop yeah coffee wagons that came around the roach yes. coaches a guy I went to school with i mean i'm sure anybody that knows me will figure it out but he was the head of a like a billion dollar numbers racket on long island and got busted it was huge the bust <laughs> and the people that knew him and knew of it. They said, this is the hugest bust. Unbelievable. They said, in three days, they'll be at, back up and running like nothing <laughs> happened. I mean, it, I guess that is so solid and people are so set in their ways, like, you know. But you didn't realize that in When you get out of jail, I want number four, seven, and 11. <laughs> Queens, all the candy stores, all yes. the coffee, cappuccino shops in the back was with the numbers parlor. And they used to have gambling parties, like for days. We used to go into a place that looked like a storefront, and the people would be sitting there from Thursday to Sunday. So one time, I think in Ridgewood, and this is a true story, I, I don't Did know Did they who, ever ask you to join in the game? No, no, I didn't have that kind of money anyway. Right, you don't right. want to get involved in that stuff. Well, anyway. I got to tell you, so you were an exterminator, and you were involved, and before I say this, the statute of limitations has <laughs> yeah, passed. I wasn't involved. Uh, in the numbers racket with the mob. And Look at this. Now he's got me in the numbers <laughs> racket. <laughs> we get the guests here on Stand Up Memories. <laughs> so how do you go from Wait, I want to know. Wait, he didn't fit. So what, how did you react to your father? Did, did he tell you you should stop working there? Or? Well, he said, what are you, crazy? You don't get involved with them. Because he was from the neighborhood. He knew people. And you said, yeah. you're not involved. You're doing a said, service. I'm doing a service. It's right. like the Everybody, person that sells them the hamburgers. Exactly. Everybody needs an exterminator. Right. right? Everybody needs it. <laughs> Even exterminators. Even exterminators. Right. <laughs> so, it was a, but it was a great gig, man. I had all the gambling parlors in, in, in the city, in uh, Queens. Wow. And, and they were illegal in themselves. Yes. Wow, okay. You know, we used to go to an Italian deli for lunch in high school. And it was Joe and Mama. Mm -hmm. And they'd be there and they'd be making us heroes, ham heroes or whatever. And every two, Joe was always walking around and disappearing into the back. <laughs> and come, and pe eventually people said, no, he's, he's doing numbers. <laughs> so he must have been taking phone calls or what, you know. But 
when you're a kid, you think, ha, oh yeah, ha, ha, ha. But, but I'm sure he I was. You know. <laughs> I wasn't really in tune to this. <laughs> so you, when, when you're killing vermin, does it strike you, I should do stand-up comedy? Did, what does exterminating, how does that propel you into stand-up comedy? I didn't think of that until I uh, retired, Okay. basically. And then I had nothing to do. I was bored. So. But you didn't go into stand-up saying, I got a tale to tell with no. the extermination. Because oh, no. when, when I met him, and he's a comic, and he's starting out, but he's a good comic, and he starts telling me, I'm like, what are you, this is your act. This is the act. Okay, this, so this it, is, it wasn't your act at the time. Right. It wasn't like. I'm like, this is gold. It wasn't like uh, you're standing there on the job, you kill a rat, and you say to yourself, this is my this last is rat. <laughs> yeah, rat, no, rat. I'm right. done. No I love rat. that business. I'd still be doing it today. I swear to God. It, you I got it? out because I couldn't handle the, the help anymore. I was tired of it. 30 years of training people and then I'm leaving. And they drop out. And you and pay them the best and they drop out and it's not for them, you know. So, do you talk about being an exterminator in your act? I do a set on uh, exterminator. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. He has a rap song. Yes. About exterminating. Roaches, and it was, and it was mice. so long <laughs> that I said the, the, the hook of this song is so good, you should do the hook and then talk about a rodent or whatever you a, the, a victim, and then do the ver the chorus again. Um, you know the chorus again, but do a different one. You know because by the time he gets the end, he's gone through all. Do one about rats. Do one about cockroaches. What else? Do one about uh, bed bugs. We bed have bug. one now. I'm coming out. With, well, I'm coming out. We didn't shoot it yet, but I got the song written for the bed bug one. <laughs> And, uh, and then we're going to go to a movie theater because it has something to do with the, you know, sitting in a movie chair. Tell, tell them the, the recurring theme. I'm Larry and I'm, what is it? Oh, I'm um, the ex-exterminator, bug and rodent terminator. Hasta la vista, see you later. <laughs> and now I start my new <laughs> one. It rolls right off your it tongue. Does. It, it rolls, rolls off the tongue. I start my new one with, I'm the I to the Z to the Z to the O. Killing all the vermin is the thing I know. I'm Larry is on the microphone. A place called Brooklyn was once my home. I'm back once again with more to say about the things I kill most every day. <laughs> and then it's I so start. Fun. I'm the ex exterminator, <laughs> brother. And then his girlfriend comes in. She has this big rat costume. <laughs> okay, now that's getting weird. That, got that weird. is you, very weird. Uh, <laughs> she go come into bed with a dressed as a rat. The, uh, the that, whiskers that, bother me. Well, she <laughs> she refused to dress up as a cockroach. <laughs> okay. So that, that's the gig I got. Did you ever show up at a place and look at all the infestation and go, I can't do it, they win? No, and I'm gonna tell you why. I was so confident in what I did. I would go to restaurants like Le Serp. No in, job in is city. too big for you. No, and that was my slogan, you know. Basically, no job is too big, no job is too small because you got people that won't do a small job. You're losing business because that could turn into a right. bigger job, right? So, uh, and that's what I did, you know. I just went around and serviced all these restaurants. So I had Le Serp as a customer, and I went in there for a, an interview, because he was interviewing me. He says, I've got six exterminators, and how are you going to help me? You, just another one. I says, don't pay me. And now they want to give you money, as soon as you say that, right? Yeah. I said, don't pay me, because I'm confident that within 30 days, I'll have this place under control. And if you don't like me, don't pay me. Shake my hand, I move on. And that was it. Now... When you go, now that is ballsy, especially in New York or whatever, you know. And I also had a lot of buildings up at Columbia University. I did like 400 buildings. For so now, when you go to a restaurant as a customer, do you look around and make? Can you tell just by looking around? If I haven't been out in 14 years. No. Why? <laughs> no, That's people funny. say if you ever <laughs> spend any funny. time in a in a restaurant kitchen, you will never <laughs> go to never, another restaurant. If I told you stories, you would never go out again. I I believe you. Yeah. But uh, no, I looked at it was like, uh, and I remember as a young exterminator, I would go into a diner on Myrtle Avenue, a 24-hour diner, there'd be rats running around the basement at two in the morning because there's nobody there eating the right. cereal or whatever. And here I am, and the guy goes, would you like a burger? I said, yeah, sure. You know? <laughs> <laughs> What's the biggest rat you ever saw? Oh, I would say a, a good 18, 19 oh, inches. With oh, the tail. With, with the, the tail, okay. But the funniest story, and this is a good rat story, I'm downtown Brooklyn, I'm doing a bagel store. 
And the guy says to me, he says, oh, so it's a Jewish rat. Yeah, <laughs> it was a Jewish rat. <laughs> so, he, so he, somebody had to say. I know. Yeah. The guy says, the guy says to me, he says, you know, we have a major problem here. So I says, oh, what's the problem? He says, well, this Sunday, he says, we're making the vat of the mix of the, the bagels. He says, and a rat. There was a blow event right above the vat. Rat runs through the blow event, gets mangled up, and all the stuff goes into the vat. So I said, that must have been a bitch removing all that stuff. He says, what? Remove. <laughs> Would you like a dozen bagels? I don't think so. <laughs> oh. There's raisins in those bagels oh. that you don't know. So oh. that I thought was hysterical, and you wouldn't like What? But the harmful thing, the horrible thing about that story is you know there's, that's not a one-off. Oh, no. You know that's happened that, that, there, it's happened here, it's happened... You, do you really want me to go on about this? Because I could talk about this all day. I want, oh, I, I I want Jackie. I want Jackie. I'm going to request one of Jackie's jokes. I'm just going to say one word and he'll know what the joke is. But he knows my act. Well, this is for our audience at home. So a guy goes into a diner and he says to the waitress, I want a bowl of hot chili. I didn't even have to say the word. And she says, I'm sorry, I, sir. The guy next to you got the last bowl. And he looks over and the guy next to him just about done eating his meal, but the chili bowl is still full. He said, well, are you going to eat that? The guy says, no. You want it? He says, yeah, I'd love it. He says, help yourself. He says, thanks. He takes the chili bowl and starts eating the chili. He gets about halfway down, and his fork hits a dead mouse. And he's like, oh! And he pukes the chili back in the bowl. And the other guy says, that's about as far as I got, too. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh at that every time. I we were doing a story. We, Robin was doing a news story on the Stern Show, and she started doing a news story about a guy who was eating in a diner, and it had you know the fake ceiling, and a mouse dropped out of the ceiling onto his table, and I started giggling, and Howard said, "What do you got a joke about a mouse in the you know like I'm." I said, yeah, and I, I, everybody told me they drove off the road. You know, I never told jokes on this show, but that was just too pregnant a situation. You know? Larry Izzo, exterminator, comedian. Let's tell the audience, uh, how do they find your podcast? Oh, on uh, Spotify, Apple Radio. And uh, its title is? The Thrill of the Kill Podcast. The, the Thrill of the Kill Podcast. And this is somebody who's killed a lot. In his life, not in a bad way. That's the thrill of the kill. It's just that's a great title. Yeah. I and love he's that. funny, and he's a good guy, and, and he's, he's a, eloquent, and he's a stand-up comedian working all over the place, right? Yeah, we're bouncing around. Yeah. Good for you. I do a lot of stuff in Florida as well. And oh, tell him the name of the other one. The uh, Laughs with Larry cooking with comics. Laughs oh, with Larry so cooking cool. with comics, and it's great fun. Oh, and that we're is bring so Bring that cool. back, starting. Is that one? Is it? Is the one posted with the beef stroganoff? Yes. Uh, it's all on YouTube. Yeah, we'll find it all. You, I mean, we'll have Larry back. We gotta have Larry back because we never got to the cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> there were I, I never of, got sick of talking about this with him. You know, I all kinds you of say we go to dinner with with the girls, but it's not the most enticing conversation for dinner with the girls. You know, and I'm you know, and I'm not sure during Maureen's a dinner heard. show either. By the way, <laughs> yeah. when you're doing stand up, well, and you're talking about rats. What a great guest. Larry is a comedian, podcaster, ex-exterminator to the mob. <laughs> All around decent guy. Thank you for being on our show. You're hey, terrific, man. Thanks for having You're me. You're great. Thank you. We will see you next time Thank on you. Stand Up Memories. That's Peter Bell. That's Jackie Martley.